Welcome to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Brand spanking new program. Oh yeah, we got this thing set. Caleb Turner Talk Show coming to you live from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada on Hornby Street. Yes, there is a place in Coquitlam, Hornby Street. It's a crazy street. 1236 Hornby Street from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. We got some brand spanking new things that we're going to introduce on the program. We've only had three editions lifetime, so it's going to be crazy. All right, we got four topics. NHL lockout, gun violence, college football bowl games, and some past champions from all the sports, NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, etc., etc., MLS Cup. Anyways, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Do you suffer from back pains? Do your joints feel like fire in the morning? Hello, my name is Vince Williams, and I am a back painologist. Suffering from back pains and joint pains can be frustrating, and of course painful. I have the solution. Just call me up for a free consultation. 604-474-4012 let me help you. I can. Next Sunday afternoon, Seahawks host the Rams for a possible chance at winning their division. Can Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch lead their Seahawks at home to a divisional championship? Find out next Sunday afternoon. Seahawks Rams live on the Anchor Radio Network at 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. This is Canada's most listened to radio network, the Anchor Radio Network. I am your host of this certain talk show, the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Of course, I am Caleb Turner. That's kind of obvious. Anyways, we are back live. On this Saturday night, and it is raining as I look out the window and see raindrops falling down. Oh, what a beautiful sight. No, it's not. We want the sun here in Coquitlam. No more rain. We're tired of seeing rain. If anything, let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Anyways, our poll question for tonight, the national championship in men's college football, Alabama versus Notre Dame. Who do you want to win? And then underneath it, we have the question, who do you think is going to win that football game? We'll get to that topic later. First off, let's start off with the NHL lockout. Now, I'm a big uh, hockey fan. I always have been. Um, Ever since about the age of about six, when our family moved here, when I was four, to the Canada area. We moved to Surrey, and um, it took me a couple of years to figure out the game, get a favorite hockey team. Of course, I obviously cheered for the Vancouver Canucks and always will be a Canucks fan. That's something I think a lot of people uh, take for granted. They switch hockey teams midway through their uh, hockey uh, watching lifetime maybe it's just it's sad it is it's really really sad but you know what you stick to the same team the same process who cares if your team stinks look at the maple Leafs fans haven't been to the playoffs in over 40 years the playoffs yeah the playoffs maple Leafs the legacy I rephrase myself there they haven't made the playoffs in the last 40 years they haven't won a Stanley Cup in over 40 years. They have made the playoffs. Okay, I'll crack myself. They have made the playoffs. But it's been a while. It's sad. It is. It's very sad. Look who, look who they've had. Matt Sundin. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's talk about the NHL lockout. Okay, it, it's very stupid. It is. It's, it's really stupid. Gary Bettman... Okay, yeah, I think we're getting to the point where, you know what, we're tired of seeing Gary Bettman, we're tired of seeing his face, and I heard on our radio show, um, 
that was actually on the Team 1040, a caller calling, I'm tired of seeing his bobbing face, the guy said. You know what? It's very true. The guy bobs his head like it's, like he's a bobblehead and he's a walking bobblehead. You know, we're, we're tired of seeing that. We're tired of it. We're tired of the, we're tired of the players making their 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 rants about Gary Batman. You know what? I don't care if you don't like the guy. I don't care if you're tired of him. I don't care if you're tired of not playing. You know what? There hasn't been a deal signed, and there probably won't be an NHL hockey season this year, 2012, 2013. There won't be one. It's sad. It it, it really is. And the fact that owners and players and coaches and, and, and trainers and, and let's talk about the assistant coaches and, and uh, managers and uh, your TV spokespeople, your, your radio announcers, your whatever, they're all out of a job. All of them. You know, the only players that are getting paid right now are the people and, and the players that are on the injured reserve list. There isn't very many injured players right now because, you know what, they've had a lot of time in the summer to recuperate. And, yeah. Yeah. People are losing money. You know, I, I, think, I, I, think, I, think, what, I think what the main problem is is it's a matter of who wants to win more. There is no compromise. It's winning outright. You know, Gary Bettman wants to win. You know he wants to win this. He doesn't want to compromise with the Player Association, Donald Fair, his brother, the other Fair, which his first name slips my mind right now. Let's get a, let's get a check on his name here in a minute. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, I want to get his name, and, and we'll talk about him. But, you know it's not a matter of compromise. They don't want to compromise. They want to win outright. You know, we're, we're, we're tired of seeing all these clips of Gary Bettman and Colin Campbell. Not Colin Campbell. Gary Bettman and his, and his other associate. He is Colin Campbell, right? Now, Colin Campbell was the former, he was the former, uh, what Brendan Shanahan's doing right now. It was, it's not Colin Campbell. We're tired of seeing Gary Bettman walking through doors in downtown New York City or in downtown wherever he's at. We're tired of seeing that. We're tired of turning on TSN and hearing the updated lockout day countdown. Which, by the way, it's over 90 days. You know, I, I remember the last lockout that we had. And I remember I had just started in the last two years at that time becoming a hockey fan and becoming a diehard Canucks fan. And I still remember I still remember the West Coast Express. We had you know Todd Bertuzzi here. Brendan Morrison was here. Marcus Naslin was here. That whole year, I just... Man, you really missed hockey. You really, you really found out you missed hockey in a lockout. You really found out the hard way. This year, in my eyes, though, it's a little bit different because there's other things going on right now. You got the NBA going on. The NBA regular season just started. NFL's heating up. Final two weeks of the regular season, baby. You got the Seahawks, who are just down the I-5. Just across the border, two hours, two and a half, three hours south, looking to win a division title, possibly? Fat chance of that happening. And I say that sarcastically, but they have a chance. They're going to make the playoffs. We all know the Seattle Seahawks are going to make the playoffs. Russell Wilson is up for Rookie of the Year. You know, baseball's not going on right now. It's not like anybody cares for baseball here, although... The Toronto Blue Jays went out and basically did like what the Miami Heat did and just brought in all the stars. And I'm not saying that all those players are stars, but, you know, they went and spent a lot of money and brought in Miguel Cabrera, Mark Burley, uh, R.A. Dickey. I mean, come on. They brought in a lot of players. Jose Reyes. And I, 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 
you look at what else is going on right now. You get a lot of stuff going on. College football, ball games, college basketball just started. It's heating up. I'm already looking forward to March Madness. But the point is, is it seems like this lockout's a little bit different than the last one in the fact that it doesn't really register as much as a, oh no, there is no hockey. What am I going to watch? There's a lot of things to watch, folks. A lot of things. I mean, j just look at what you've got on TV right now this very second. This very second right now. They moved Monday Night Football to Saturday night. You get to watch the Atlanta Falcons smoke the Detroit Lions at Ford Field. Think about that one for a second. That's on right now. You got the Lakers. Steve Nash is making his return tonight. That's coming up. In fact, tip-off is going on right now. It just tipped off just a couple minutes ago. Steve Nash is back. And that's another reason why the Lakers uh, have gotten a lot of Canadian fans because Steve Nash, obviously from this area here in BC, they like him. And they like the Lakers. So I, you know, okay, we're upset about the lockout. We're upset about Gary Bettman. We're upset about the owners, and they're obsessed for money. They're, we're upset. We, we're upset, period. End of sentence, we're upset. What's that going to get us, though? Where is that going to get us in the grand scheme of things? Nowhere. It's time that, that somebody stepped up. One of the players, I don't care who it is, and one of these owners that are, oh, well, we don't know if we can stand up to Gary Batman or not and get away with it. You're in a lockout, for crying out loud. You're in a lockout. Who cares what you say? Nobody's going to care what you say right now. But at least say something. It wouldn't hurt. Bill Daly. That's who it is. Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly. Bill Daly and Gary Bettmore. Tired of seeing them talking and smiling under their breath and saying, Hey, man, you know, I mean, it's really upset that this, uh, this lockout's going on, man, you know. What are you going to do tonight for dinner? Well, I'm just going to go get another steak at the keg. It's garbage. It really is, you know. I I think I think the sports um, the sports channels could really get something. Um, maybe if maybe if somebody could talk to them about maybe changing what their highlight packages are. It always opens up with the next day of the lockout. Who cares anymore? Who cares? And it, it it's really sad because all these teams that are down south, you know, Carolina and Tampa Bay and and Florida and Phoenix and and even teams like, you know, Nashville, okay, they make the playoffs, but, you know, just go with me here. All these teams that are barely getting by, Columbus, Minnesota, well, Minnesota sells out every game, but, you know, teams like teams like Columbus. What's going to happen to their, their fan base when you have a lockout? They're barely getting by as it is. We'll talk more about... Um, teams and, and their successes later on in the program. But uh, we have a very, very disheartening topic coming up at uh, after the break at the top of the hour, gun violence. And it, it doesn't have to be in the States. It doesn't have to be in Canada, for that matter. I mean, look what's going on over in Syria and other parts of the world there in the Middle East and, and uh, places over there. We'll talk about the NRA. We'll talk about college football after that. The national championship game. Big national championship game. SEC versus no division. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's basically, basically, if we're going to talk about it, it's SEC versus the Catholics. And I know, I know Notre Dame doesn't have very many Catholics on their team. In fact, their star player is a Mormon. That's, that's kind of funny, but um, Manti Teo, he is a Mormon. We'll talk more about that. 
Coach Saban versus Coach Kelly. And, uh, and then we'll wrap up today's show with the past champions from the sports worlds. Stanley Cup, the NBA Finals, the Super Bowl, the World Series, the Masters. We might even get into the Masters. We'll see. MLS Cup, National Championship in college football. National Championship in college basketball, the road to the Final Four. We'll talk about that and the success that Kentucky has had there with Coach Calipari and the success that, of course, Alabama's had with Coach Saban. But we're going to get into gun violence next after the break. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show. I'm your host, Caleb Turner. We'll be right back, and we'll just get a word from our uh, service providers here on the Anchor Radio Network, the mighty Anchor Radio Network. We'll be right back. After his first CD went viral, Carlos Samilia decided to make his second CD, the new hit album, No More Night, with songs like I Need Jesus and Eight more songs for you to enjoy, all for the price of $5. Once again, the cost for the new hit album, No More Night by Carlos Samilia, $5 plus shipping and handling. Back here live on the Anchor Radio Network, the Caleb Center Talk Show. Carlos Amelia's new hit CD, No More Night. I have this thing on my iPod, I have this thing on my laptop, I have this thing everywhere. This thing is an incredible CD. Five dollars, as you heard in the commercial. This one's track five, this one's probably my favorite one. We were the reason. Just such a great message in the CD, especially this song. Every song is just on this CD just has a great message. I would encourage you to buy this. Find this in your local stores. Um, or come to Anchor Baptist Church and meet Carlos Samilia yourself. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Of course, I get to see him every week, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. And um, his son is the co-producer of Anchor Films. One of the co- one of the co-producers. We have two. And um, of course, I am the producer and director of Anchor Films. So, yeah, but anyways, that's that's beside the point. But you can come to Anchor Baptist Church and meet Carlos Samilia yourself. You your life will be changed. I am am guaranteeing you, your life will be changed. This guy is unbelievable. He is a magician. He is a singer. He's got everything. The talent, the looks. Well, yeah, he's got the looks. And you know what? He's so modest about it. That's the part that is so cool to be around him. You hear on the CD, he's singing four parts in this song. It's all him, recorded separately. I mean, he doesn't use a professional studio. He uses a room in his house. Come on, folks. Five dollars for this CD. That's so cheap. But the five dollar deal doesn't last very long. In fact, it only lasts today, and then it goes back up to ten dollars for the CD, and um, potentially fifteen dollars. But we shall see. The CD's worth thirty, to be honest with you. The CD's just worth a lot. And um, the conclusion of track five, and um, wow, unbelievable. I'm just glad we got to have part of that on the show. Part of that on the show here for entering into our next topic. A topic that I don't think a lot of people want to talk about. 
right now, especially at this time. Of course, I think there's a lot of people that are actually talking about it. Anyways. Um, gun violence in America, in Canada. The mass shootings in the U.S. have just gotten out of control. I'm an American. I was born in Indiana. Raised in Michigan. Our family came to Canada as missionaries. Baptist missionaries. And, um... I'm an American. I, I, I don't... I don't I don't really consider myself a Canadian. Obviously, I'm not a Canadian. I was born in the States. I'm always going to be an American. But, I mean, it, it's... It's sad when you turn on the news and you see what's going on in your home country. And really, it seems right now it's just the U.S. I know there's violence in the Middle East, but that's kind of expected. I, at least I, I think it's expected. That's where all the unrest is. That's where all the Jews and the Arabs, they just they, they, major things going on over there. And, and they brought in everybody else involved in into it as well. It's not just Druze and, Ra and the Arabs, but I mean, I don't know what to say. It's, it seems like right now it's just the States, you know, this year it's just been unbelievable. I mean, in the summer you had the movie theater shooting. Now you got the school shooting. What can be done? And you, and you had the NRA coming out and saying, well, you know what we need to do? We need to have the good guy with a gun in a school to protect the children from the bad guy with the gun. Why are there guns being sold that are like assault rifles? In the first place, why are there those kind of guns being sold? I understand the handgun thing. Okay. The Constitution. The right to bear arms. I get that. I think everybody gets that. But to be able to buy an assault rifle? It's not just assault rifles. I mean, come on. We're making a big deal because of an assault rifle. No, no, no. There's more than just assault rifles being able to be bought. Okay? It's sad. It really is. But kudos to everybody um, across the world. Yesterday is, um, excuse me, um, Thursday. No, it was yesterday. As we paid respect to the lives that were lost at the school. Moment of silence, national moment of silence, and the world participated in that. It's sad. It, it was. It, it was very, very sad. But moving forward. What did the U.S. do? What new gun rules will be put into place by President Obama? He's come out and said, we're going to do something about it. Okay, when? I know I know it's the holidays right now. It's okay. Christmas time. All right. You get your break. But you know what? At the beginning of the year, one of the first things that should be on the list that President Barack Obama does is put some restrictions on the buying and the selling of guns. It seems like, you know, and I know there's been, there, and some people come out and say, well, there's only been like five school shootings in the last 13 years. No, nah, come on. Come on. Only five is too much. There should be none. There should have never been a shooting at Columbine. There should never have been a Virginia check. Shooting. And you know what? We, 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 we turn on the news, we turn on the world news, and we expect good things to be heard. How come there's so many bad things? And I think people, people begin to think that the world is supposed to be naturally good. No, it's not. It's not naturally good. It's called the sin nature of man. There's just been way too many mass shootings across the states. And it doesn't have to be a mass shooting. It's a shooting period. People murdering people. People going out 
and just killing people like it's nothing. And then they go commit suicide, and everybody says, okay, well, they, they're gone now, so they're no problem. No, 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 no. It's like sweeping it underneath the rug. And with this past shooting, obviously, things are going to be taking place. There are going to be some restrictions put on guns. But the question is, what are going to be the restrictions? I'm okay with a handgun. I'm okay with that. There's no problem with having a handgun in your house. Hidden, obviously. Not out in the open. Not in your kitchen table. But the point is, there will be something done. When, we don't know. Obviously... When the president gets back from his Christmas vacation, something is going to take place. It's not going to get any better on its own. It's only going to get worse. Period. Done. But again, we, 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 we can nail this in the ground. And it's just not going to get better on its own. Man Sin Nature says, you know what? I'm tired of that person being around. Or I just feel like going out and do something like this. I just don't know what gets into the mind of someone to take a gun on someone. Look in the Bible. Book of Genesis, the first murder. Cain taking out his brother Abel. What got into his mind? People say it's selfishness. You know what? The world has gotten so bad and so blinded. It's okay to take the life of a child. That's sad. It is. It's murder, period. And we, and we, we can talk about everything about that but you know what honestly we don't have the time and honestly what good is it gonna do nothing nothing at all just hopefully something will get done that can maybe decrease the rate of violence in the u.s canada now i know canada canada doesn't seem to have as much problems Obviously, because they only have under 60 million people, and maybe not even that. You look at the states, they got over 300 million people. Obviously, they're going to have more murders. So, for all these Canadians are saying, oh man, the U.S., man, shame on them. Well, if you had 300 and some million people, you're going to have some crazy people with guns. That want to take out other people. But it's good. It, 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 it's good that Canada doesn't have as many violence. It's not as much violence. It doesn't have as many murders. It's good. It seems like a safe place to live in. Although there has been some things within the past couple of weeks and months that just it's really disgusting. You read in the newspapers and on the news and seeing on the news. But it's normal, I guess, which is it's too bad it's the normal. We'll take a break. We'll be back. After the break, we'll talk about some college football. <laughs> Alabama and Notre Dame National Championship going on later in January. But some pretty key matchups as well. Um, and we saw a pretty good game today. Boise State, Broncos, and Washington Huskies playing each other. It was a good game. They're at the Mako Las Vegas ball in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll get into that at the top of the hour. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. We'll be right back. The all-new 2013 Mustang is in store at the local Ford dealership. Come on in, test drive one. Rentals starting at $500 a month. And you can buy one for $25,000. Just $25,000 plus your RSP and your tax and anything else that Ford dealership wants to pin on you, but you know what? Come on in and buy one, an all-new 2013 Ford Mustang.
We're back live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Dude, you've got a weird choice of music. Bob, you alright back there? Please. The Undertaker's theme song? Wow. The Undertaker from the WWE, WWF, whatever. This is not the WWE talk show. No, this is the Caleb Turner talk show on the Anchor Radio Network. Yes, it is the Caleb Turner talk show. I know you were really, really up, uh, uh, happy about that. This is the Undertaker's Funeral Dirge theme original as uh, being downloaded off YouTube by the Anchor Radio Network, obviously. Bob, thank you. The next topic of the discussion, can this music wrap up? We have to listen to it all. We do? Okay. Alrighty. We'll just let it keep right on playing. done five minutes what two minutes that's only a minute ah, it's just Anyways, our next topic here on the Cable Turner Talk Show, college football bowl games. You saw a really good bowl game today. The Boise State Broncos taking on the Washington Huskies. You know, I really, really thought Washington was going to win the game. Boise State seemed to really lay it back. They just didn't seem like they knew what they were doing. But they actually had a chance to win. Washington did. I thought it was really, really amazing when... Um, Boise State got the ball back on the interception, and okay, it was over, whatever. There was really no celebration. It just was like, okay, yeah, we won the Mako Las Vegas Bowl, whatever. It's pretty crazy, though. Washington had a chance. As we wrap up the Undertaker's theme song, it's about time this thing's done. Good night, what's it, two and a half minutes? Try to shorten the opening music, Bob, seriously. Let's try to keep it under a minute. I'm all for the dramatic opener of my talk shows, but you know what? We don't need two and a half minutes of The Undertaker's theme song. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. All right. Back to college football. Your national championship, the Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish later on in January. It's going to be a good game. Defending champs Alabama, playing the undefeated Notre Dame Fighter Nurse, who have had a very, very difficult schedule this year. Playing teams like Michigan. Yeah, playing teams like Michigan. Anyways, <laughs> USC. And, um, you know, they played a pretty tough Pittsburgh team. I believe they played Wake Forest earlier in the year. Uh, they've had to go in. They played Oklahoma. Did not they play Oklahoma? Or was it Wisconsin? It was one of those teams they played. And, um... Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing when you see a team like Notre Dame on TV, and then you watch them in person, and it's like a totally different team that you're seeing. This is a stacked team. The question is, do they beat Alabama? No. Not even close. They do not beat Alabama, period. Done. End of sentence. We can almost move on to the next topic, but we want to talk more about Alabama. Nick Saban, is he one of the coaches all time of the NCAA college football history? Is he? I think he is. He's a magician. The guy's like Bill Belichick of the NFL. He's like Scotty Bowman of the NHL. And he's like Phil Jackson of the NBA. Nick Saban 
is unbelievable. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna get technical, it's like Joe Torre of the MLB. Okay, whatever, Joe Torre. I mean, seriously, Alabama has seems like they've been in the national championship every year. Seems like Alabama's right there every year. It's like the Georgia Bulldogs. They always get to the SEC championship game, and then they collapse against Alabama. What do you think? Alabama's stacked. They have incredible recruiting. It's like the Kentucky Wildcats of college basketball. They're always good. Period. It's like the Red Wings. The Red Wings always make the playoffs. It's like the Lakers. They always make the playoffs, except for the year, you know, okay, a couple of years ago when they didn't make the playoffs just before they went on their back-to-back -back national championships. Or I should say NBA finals. We're talking about college football right now, so I'm in this national championship mood. The Miami Heat won the national championship of NBA. We'll get into past champions later on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, national championship. Winner, Alabama wins, no questions asked. I don't I, I don't think they lose. It just doesn't sound right. Alabama losing two games in a regular season schedule? It just doesn't sound right. Alabama wins. I don't know what the score is going to be. I don't really care what the score is going to be. Alabama's going to win, period. Today's game, Boise State beats Washington barely. Didn't look like Boise State from last year with Kellen Moore and the, and the rest of the gang that they had last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that. I'm a Broncos fan. Boise State, not Denver. Boise State. The Boise State Broncos always get robbed. They always make that one mistake that could have gotten them into the national championship game. I remember two years ago, or was it three years ago, where they kicked the ball, game-winning field goal, and it hit the upright and it bounced right back. They kick that. They end going on. They get an undefeated year. And they're only like one of two, two undefeated teams. So they're in the national championship game. And you say, why are you a Broncos fan? Boise State Broncos. Why are you a Boise State Broncos fan, Mr. Turner? I'm a Boise State Broncos fan because if you college football fan remember the Fiesta Bowl about you know, I don't know, it's five or six years ago. I think it was actually five years ago. I think it was the 2007 Fiesta Bowl, I think, when they were playing Oklahoma. In a couple of trick plays, and they win the game. Boise State beats Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. How does that happen? And so then you ask me, why do you like Boise State? You know what? They're classy. I still remember watching that game. I was in a hotel room. We were dropping off my grandparents down in Seattle to fly back to uh, Tennessee. We were watching that game. I still remember they did the flea flicker with like, what was it, 20 seconds left in the game. The guy ran it in for a touchdown. Um, did they have to go for two or did they just kick? I think they kicked the extra point. And then in overtime, they do the old Statue of Liberty, fake the throw keep the ball behind the guy's butt and the guy runs it in and then I thought the cool part was I think it was the running back who ran the ball in goes over and proposes to one of the cheerleaders what a crazy way to end a pretty crazy game so that's why I like the Boise State Broncos of all the teams in the NCAA I choose the Boise State Broncos as my team and you'd say well why aren't you an Indiana fan or Michigan fan I like Michigan. Michigan's a good team, too. But Michigan has no chance against South Carolina. No chance. Steve Spurrier, one of the best NCAA play coaches in the league, in my opinion, as well. They have no chance. Period. Denard Robinson or no Denard Robinson, they don't have a chance. So Michigan loses that game. That's another bowl game that we're talking about. I thought the game earlier today between uh, Louisiana Lafayette and um, whoever that team was. I liked that game. That was a pretty good game. They're in St. Petersburg. It wasn't in St. Petersburg. It was in New Orleans. 
East Carolina, that's who it was. East Carolina, Louisiana, and Lafayette. That was a good game. That was very high score. It was a very high-octane game. And then you followed up with Boise State and Washington in the Las Vegas Bowl. Kudos to Washington. I mean, they, they came out. They played hard. They should have gotten kicked, but they didn't. They kept it close, and they even had the lead with, like, a minute and a half to go. It should have won the game, but, I mean, come on. Boise State was saving the best for last. Saving some high drama. But it's okay. Boise State's going to the Big East now. At least that's what they say they're doing. They're going to the Big East. We think they're going to the Big East. We don't know for sure yet. But it looks like it. The Big East might double this year, if you can believe that. They might double. But they're not sure. We'll find out later on. Again, our poll question for the day here on the Cable Center Talk Show is National Championship, Alabama versus Notre Dame. Who do you think will win? Actually, it goes, who do you want to win? Who do you think will win is the other question. If we're going to get technical. The order of the question. I want Alabama to win, and I think Alabama will win. Do I think it's going to be a good game? Yeah, it's going to be a very, very close game. And we can end the topic like that. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some past championship winners title winners, whatever you want to call it. We got the NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, uh, MLS, if we want to get into that, NCAA football, NCAA basketball. We got the Masters, if we want to get into that, that crazy shot by Bubba Watson from the woods. We may even get to that. This is the Cable Center Talk Show. You got it live on the Anchor Radio Network. We will be right back. After a tough first day exit, the Northwest Christian Invitational, the Burnaby Grizzlies headed home sad upset, wondering what went wrong. But in March, the Grizzlies will have a chance at redemption at the Don Bosco 3-on-3 tournament. Tune in live on the Anchor Radio Network for the full play-by-play. Grizzlies versus whoever they want to play. The Don Bosco 3-on-3 tournament from Surrey, British Columbia, Canada comes live on the Anchor Radio Network. March 2013. Will they be ready this time? We're back live on the Anchor Radio Network, the Caleb Turner Talk Show, wrapping up our final segment here on this Saturday night. That's a little better music, Bob. How hard is it to choose between good music and just wacky music? I like this one. This one's got a good re- good ring to it. Final segment today. Past champions in the past leagues, in the sports leagues. NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, MLS, NCAA football, NCAA basketball. And maybe even get into the Masters. We'll see what we got. We got a lot of things planned in this last segment. Might as well go ahead and start with our favorite sport, the NHL. Past champion Stanley Cup, Los Angeles Kings. That team name does not sit very well with me. I'm a Canucks fan. They eliminated us in five games. I don't like the Kings. There ain't much to talk about with the Kings. Who did they have? Dustin Brown. Ooh. Dustin Penner. Ooh. Any more Dustins? You know, I I think the Kings really got lucky with who they played. It it just kind of, everything kind of fell into place. They had a good goalie, Jonathan Quick. He's one of the best goalies in the league. So, when people say that the Kings are a good team, I disagree. Not because I'm a Canucks fan and they eliminate us, but because the Kings are not a good team. They won the Stanley Cup? Okay. Good. I'm happy for you. Do they have a good goalie? Yes. Very, very good goalie. 
going. Thank you, Bob. But you know what? Uh, Team-wise, well, maybe everything just kind of fell into place for him. I tend to agree with that. NBA, Miami Heat. Wow. I don't, I don't think that there's ever been a better NBA team than the Miami Heat of last year. And this year, they're about the same. They're all they're going to be good until LeBron James or Dwayne Wade or Chris Bosh leave. They're going to be a good team. And I think it's really because LeBron James, I think, is the best basketball player right now in the league. Um, well, I, I guess I maybe overall. Um, I think Kobe Bryant's the best scorer in the league right now. Obviously, he leads the league in points per game. Like he's at twenty nine and a half. But the Miami Heat of last year had everything going for him. And in the last game of the NBA Finals, Mike Miller went out with a bang with like five or six three-pointers. Everything clicked for the Miami Heat last year. So they have the experience. They can't give this, this baloney that they don't have any experience in the NBA Finals together. They have the experience. Back-to-back NBA Finals. They lost to Dallas two years ago. And they played a really good Dallas team. Last year they played a really good Thunder team. Who did the Thunder have? Well, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook. Yeah. That's that's a pretty good lineup. Right there, those two players. That's all they needed. And they had Serge Ibaka, Tabo Selvalosha. Um, who am I forgetting? They had, they had Harden. They had James Harden. Um... Did not they have Kendrick Persons? Perkins? They had Perkins, right? Am I thinking of somebody else? Yeah, they had Perkins. They had Kendrick. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. The Thunder were a good team last year, and they literally ran over everybody. They took out San Antonio, which I thought was very, very impressive. So, it's not like Miami played a really, really hard team or a really, really easy team last year. They played a hard team. And this year, they're hoping to do it again. And I think they will. I think they'll be right back there in the NBA Finals. And I'm a Lakers fan. The Lakers aren't going anywhere. They aren't going anywhere. Even with Kobe Bryant scoring over 30 a game, they aren't going anywhere. They brought in Dwight Howard. What's he done? Hasn't made a free throw. And I know it takes time to get chemistry and everything. Look, if they're getting paid millions, they should be able to pick up like this. Period. They got it. I think they made a very unwise decision in firing Mike Brown. But it was even unwiser when they turned down Phil Jackson. I mean, if you're going to fire Mike Brown, you're going to hire Phil Jackson. Because Phil Jackson is the only logical decision. He's the only one who knows all those players. NFL. I'm tired of talking about the Lakers. NFL, Super Bowl, New York Giants. Wow. Another team that I just am wowed by because it seems like they always do pathetic in the regular season and they barely get in. And then they go in and they run over everybody. I'm a Seahawks fan, and the Seahawks look pretty good this year. But you know what? The Giants, with a win tomorrow, keep their playoff chances alive. It's going to happen. The Giants will be in the playoffs next year. This year. This year. Next year, they'll probably be in the playoffs, too. Eli Manning is a wizard. Victor Cruz is a wizard. Victor Cruz, by the way, born again Christian, has a great testimony. The Giants seem like... They always do so much better in the playoffs. And it takes them a lot to get into the playoffs, it seems like. MLS, LA Galaxy. David Beckham, Landon Donovan. Need I go any further? Incredible lineup. Some controversy as they beat the Whitecaps. I'm a little upset about that. I'm a Whitecaps fan. But they ran over everybody else. Nobody else had any chance. It was, it was just it was done. 
And Houston didn't have a chance. I watched the game, watched the highlights, watched it over again and again and again. And it's, yeah, David Beckham went out with a bang. Truly, probably one of the best soccer players in North America right now. David Beckham. Hands down. NCAA football. Last year, Alabama beats LSU. Now, we can talk about this for quite a while, but LSU, it seemed like nothing went right for them in that game. It wasn't necessarily that Alabama played better. It just seemed like nothing went right for LSU. On paper, they really matched up quite well. But Alabama came away with a win. NCAA basketball, Kentucky. Kentucky last year was basically the Miami Heat of last year. They had everybody. Anthony Davis, Michael Kidd. Gilchrist Jr. Excuse me, not Jr. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. That's it. Um, Jeremy Lamb. Need I go any further? Coach Calipari is like the Coach K of yesteryear. And Coach K is still good, too, by the way. Duke is ranked number one right now. Second is Michigan. Michigan looks good, too. Michigan's got a Canadian. Nick Stauskas. Hello. But we're talking about Kentucky right now of last year. Kentucky was such a good team last year. It was like watching an NBA team perform. Coach K had a, excuse me, not Coach K, Coach C had him going. And they went all the way and won. Hands down. Beat Kansas. They look good again this year. Not as good, but still decent. Masters, Bubba Watson with probably one of the biggest shots ever in the PGA. Winning the green jacket in stunning fashion. Born again Christian as well. Excellent testimony. And really hasn't done much since then. But he still manages to stick around in all of our discussions. Bubba Watson, in my eyes, okay, Roy McIlroy's number one golf for the year. Okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with that. Roy McIlroy is like a rare breed. It was like the Tiger Woods before Tiger Woods had all his problems. Roy McIlroy probably won't break all of Tiger's records, but he's going to break some of them and most of them. But Bubba Watson, in my eyes, second or third best player in the PGA this past year. And not just because of the Masters. He did good in the Ryder Cup. It wasn't him that blew it. Past champions of last year's sports titles, if you want to call it. The results are in, by the way. We closed our poll. And um, 63% of you are going with Alabama. 37% are going with Notre Dame. You choose, you vote, we decide. It's always been our motto. And we choose Alabama here on the Anchor Radio Network and the Cable Turner Talk Show. As we wrap up the day, I want to thank everybody working behind the scenes. I want to thank Bob over there at Control and um, running the switchboard and giving us all of our songs. And uh, thank, uh, who else do I want to thank? I want to thank our producer and our your uh, director. Who else do we got on the list here? Let's check out the list. Let's see here. That's about it. I want to thank the Anchor Radio Network for letting us keep this talk show on the air. And I want to thank all of our commercials. I want to thank Carlos Amelia for his uh, contribution to the commercial there. I highly recommend buying that CD, by the way. And uh, it won't be on sale much longer. It'll be back to its regular price. But uh, get it while it's hot. And right now, it is hot. Period. And his last uh, CD, God's Love, that was a hot CD, too. And the back pain there, um, Vince Williams. I'm going to thank him for his little in-scoop. The 
Seattle Seahawks game next week could potentially be one of the biggest games of the year. I think tomorrow night's game against the Niners, that's the biggest game of the year, period. But if we're going to talk about it in the grand scheme of things, if Seattle wins tomorrow night, beats the Niners, the Niners play the cards next week, shouldn't have much of a problem with it. But let's say Arizona somehow stuns them. The Seahawks and Rams is the divisional game for the Seahawks. It could come down to that. But the point that we're trying to make is the Seahawks are in the playoffs 99.9% sure. If you didn't understand the point that we were trying to get across, now you do. Thanks for listening to today. We'll be back next Saturday night. I want to thank everybody for listening, everybody working behind the scenes. Again, like I said, Bob, they're at control. And uh, running everything that uh, needed to be run there and the commercials and the songs, media, and everything else involved with that. Again, thanks to the Anchor Radio Network for letting us be on the air for the fifth time. Can't believe they keep letting us on here. Special thanks to the Bernie Grizzlies for their contribution also on the commercial. I am looking forward to the Don Bosco Tournament. Of course, I will be participating in it. But anyways, um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to listening to the calls that they will have of the game. That does it for us. We're done. The Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Runner Network. Tune in next Saturday for another broadcast of the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Enjoy the game tomorrow, folks. Stay safe and uh, enjoy the holidays. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the time off of school, kids. It only happens like twice a year. You get Christmas break, spring break, and then everybody else gets their pro-D days and their random holidays, their days off. Enjoy. Merry Christmas, everybody. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. This has been a presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Tune in every Saturday for the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Next week, from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada, the Caleb Turner Talk Show will resume. Tune in next week for the Caleb Turner Talk Show.